On a seemingly routine flight, a seven-year-old boy's cryptic hand gesture perplexed passengers and crew alike. His subtle yet eerie signal caught the attention of a vigilant stewardess whose instincts led her to discreetly dial the emergency number, sparking concern and intrigue among the passengers. But before we start, smash the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on our upcoming stories. As the plane descended towards its destination, airport security braced for a potentially ominous revelation. Tension filled the air as they rushed to the scene, ready for the unexpected. Little did they know that what unfolded next would defy all expectations, plunging everyone into a gripping mystery that would keep hearts pounding and minds racing. There was no one beside him at this point, but a woman was sitting on the seat next to him. That doesn't sound all that strange, but what the boy was doing caught Betty off guard. What's up? Betty's colleague asked her. Betty gasped. Oh, you startled me, she said while smiling. It's nothing. I just zoned out for a second. It's time to give out drinks. Are you coming? Her colleague asked. Betty nodded and followed her to the galley. She asked if they could be the ones handing out drinks in aisle two, which was the one where the boy was sitting. Sadly, two other colleagues had already begun handing out drinks in that aisle, so Betty could only observe from a distance. She watched how the woman next to the boy handled the situation. She ordered a glass of wine for herself and an apple juice for the boy, meaning they did belong together. But the feeling something wasn't right didn't seem to fade. It grew more. The boy didn't even dare to look at Betty's colleagues. He just looked out of the window while nervously fidgeting with his hands. He looked scared and almost unsure of the situation. Betty knew she had to do something to help him. They were on a 13-hour flight, so time wasn't an issue, but she had to be discreet about it. She decided to go to the boy as soon as she finished handing out drinks. She had to wait until the woman would go to the bathroom again so that she could speak with the boy in private. After an hour of waiting, it was finally time. Betty's heart began to race as she noticed the woman removing her seatbelt. She leaned over to the boy and whispered something to him before she got up and walked over to the bathroom. She quickly grabbed a coloring book and some pencils and waited for the right time. As the woman discreetly slipped into the airplane bathroom, Betty's intuition sprang into action. She gathered her courage, took a deep breath, and approached the young boy as if nothing were amiss. As Betty approached, the boy's eyes widened in shock, his gaze darting to the window as if seeking an escape. Undeterred, Betty extended a peace offering, a colorful coloring book with a warm smile on her face. Hi there, she began kindly. I have a nice coloring book for you if you'd like. She held it up, hopeful eyes fixed on the boy. Yet to her surprise, the boy remained unresponsive, his gaze locked on the outside world as if under a spell of silence. The unfolding mystery seemed to thicken, leaving Betty with more questions than answers and the entire cabin on the edge of their seats. Knowing she didn't have much time, Betty looked at the lavatory. The sign was still red, but it could jump to green any second. She placed the coloring book on the tray in front of the boy and placed the pencils on top. I'm in the back if you need any help with anything. Don't be shy to ask. We're here to help you, she whispered. Suddenly, the light of the lavatory jumped to green. She watched as the woman got back to her seat and instantly noticed the coloring books. Confused, she looked around and sat down. She saw how the woman whispered something to the boy and then took away the coloring book. Betty sighed. Her plan had failed. She had hoped to win over the boy's trust with the gift she brought, but the boy didn't even acknowledge her. And why would the woman take away the coloring book? What if the boy changed his mind and later on did want to color? There had to be something else she could do. Betty knew she couldn't do this on her own. She needed a fresh set of eyes to look at the situation and confirm that Betty wasn't seeing things that weren't there. What's going on, Betty? A colleague suddenly asked. It was as if she had read Betty's mind. Betty sighed. I need to tell you something. Betty couldn't contain the enigma any longer and decided to confide in her colleague, Joanne. She recounted the bizarre signs, the boy's peculiar behavior in the absence of the woman. When Betty concluded her account, 
Joanne sighed in bewilderment. This all sounds very strange to me, she admitted. Why not confront the woman and seek answers directly? Betty's eyes fixated on the floor, a realization dawning upon her. She hadn't considered the direct approach. In a heart-pounding turn of events, the tranquil cabin was shattered by the boy's piercing scream. Betty and Joan swiftly sprang into action, rushing to the scene, their faces etched with concern as they witnessed the boy struggling within the woman's grasp. Let him go! Betty's voice thundered with urgency. The mother turned to Betty, her eyes wide with surprise, attempting to explain the unsettling episode. He's fine, just a little scared of the noise coming from the engine, she insisted, trying to soothe the escalating tension. Betty's intuition refused to accept the woman's explanation. Her resolve was unshaken. She discreetly retreated to the galley, swiftly dialing the emergency number for the destination airport. With determination in her voice, she instructed them to prepare for immediate action upon landing. There was no chance she would allow the woman to disembark with the boy without further investigation. As the plane descended towards its destination, a new sense of urgency and suspense hung in the air. As passengers wondered what would unfold upon arrival, Betty, with a stewardess's practiced poise, quietly stepped into the galley's narrow confines to update ground authorities. Boy in seat 24A, potentially in trouble, she intoned softly into the phone, ensuring her voice wouldn't carry. Betty provided a detailed report on a young boy, his nervous behavior, and discreet hand signals. Betty stressed the need for preparedness while avoiding panic as the plane approached its destination. With a practiced subtlety, Betty kept her updates flowing to the ground team. Each word was measured and each observation was crucial to ensure the silent alarm she raised would result in a safe and secure resolution. The disparity between his quietness and the other children's laughter around them was striking, a glaring alarm bell to Betty's trained senses. She moved through her duties, all while keeping a covert eye on the silent drama in row 17. Meanwhile, the woman, playing the part of the Guardian, adopted a facade of casual indifference, yet her intermittent glances at her watch betrayed an underlying anxiety. As the journey neared its conclusion, Betty hastened to prepare the cabin for landing, a heightened sense of urgency pervading her every move. Under the pretext of standard procedure, she quietly instructed her colleagues, stay alert and follow my lead. The atmosphere within the cabin crackled with a potent blend of customary tranquility and an unmistakable readiness for the uncertain events that loomed on the horizon. With hearts pounding and anticipation running high, passengers and crew braced themselves for the final act in this in-flight saga, eager to witness the resolution of the captivating mystery that had held them in suspense throughout the journey. As the aircraft's wheels brushed the runway, Betty's voice cut through the cabin's relief at landing. Please remain seated with your belts fastened. Her tone, though calm, carried an edge that pricked at the passenger's ease, turning their thoughts from the usual rush to disembark to a murmur of speculation. Heads turned, seeking the reason for this deviation from the norm, their curiosity piqued by the somber seriousness of her demeanor. With the seatbelt sign illuminated, Betty patrolled the aisle, ensuring compliance. We appreciate your cooperation at this time, she announced. Please stay seated until further notice, Betty reiterated, her firm tone reinforcing the command as the plane turned toward the gate. The usual hustle of retrieving bags from overhead bins was stalled by her authoritative directive, her intent clear but the reason obscured, leaving passengers to exchange worried glances and whispers over the unexpected protocol. From the flight deck, the pilot's voice emerged. We'll be deplaning shortly, he assured, his message coded for those in the know. His brief glance towards Betty was a silent acknowledgement of their shared secret, the imminent arrival of law enforcement prepared to assess the boy's situation as soon as the cabin door opened. Betty's final briefing to her team was succinct, with a soft yet urgent undertone to her instructions. Be ready to assist on my cue, she said, ensuring everyone understood their roles. The attendants nodded, their faces masks of professional calm, ready to direct the passenger's attention away from the boy and the arriving officers to facilitate a discreet handover. Betty 
moved through the cabin with purpose, her voice calmed in a tempest of whispered concern. We're just taking a few extra precautions today, she informed inquiring passengers with a placating smile. Her assurance was a balm to the fretful passengers, her request for their patience and cooperation a subtle stitch to hold the fabric of calm in place. Murmurs ebbed and flowed through the rows of seats, a low tide of conjecture rising with each minute of delay. As the aircraft docked, tension filled the cabin as passengers grew restless and curious about the delay. Betty remained vigilant, awaiting the arrival of authorities and bracing for the unfolding situation. The aircraft door opened and police officers stepped in with a purpose that rippled through the cabin. Their entrance, assertive and silent, turned every head, a wave of reactions flowing through the aisles. The passengers, already steeped in suspense, now watched the unfolding scene with bated breath. The officers moved down the aisle with a clear target. Their steps were measured their focus unyielding as they approached the boy and his guardian. There was no hesitation in their stride, a testament to the urgency and gravity of the situation that had been conveyed by Betty's quiet calls. As the officers reached the row, the atmosphere grew increasingly tense, casting a spotlight on the woman and the boy. Passengers strained to catch even the faintest snippets of the conversation, their necks craned in anticipation. A distinctive cuff clicked into place, eliciting gasps of astonishment from onlookers. The woman's impassioned protest reverberated throughout the cabin, her voice laced with a mixture of confusion and fear. In a hushed moment of gravity, the boy, his gaze wide and silent, was tenderly guided from his seat by a resolute officer, his small hand enveloped in the comforting embrace of safety. As the woman's protests gradually faded into a distant echo, they moved together toward the exit. In the confines of the airport terminal, the woman, flustered yet determined, presented her identification. Her voice steadied as she explained the boy's hand signals. Each gesture, a part of a language developed in therapy. The police officers scrutinized the documents, their expressions shifting from suspicion to consideration. The ID confirmed her relationship with the boy, adding a layer of complexity to the unfolding narrative. As the woman spoke, her narrative began to reshape the officer's understanding. She wasn't the boy's mother, but his aunt and the distress signals Betty observed were, in fact, therapeutic exercises. The aunt detailed the boy's fear of flying, an anxiety that gripped him tightly during the flight. He uses these hand gestures to self-soothe, she explained, demonstrating the motions. Her explanation shed light on the boy's behavior, illuminating his actions as coping mechanisms. The officers listened, the pieces of the puzzle fitting together to reveal a story not of danger, but of a child's struggle with fear. The police attentively listened as the woman recounted her nephew's journey with anxiety. She spoke of therapy sessions, of strategies devised to help him navigate overwhelming situations like flying. Her voice carried the weight of responsibility and care, resonating with sincerity. The boy, now calmer, spoke in soft, hesitant tones, echoing his aunt's explanation. His words were clear and his expression filled with relief as he conveyed his emotions. Betty grappled with the realization that her well-intentioned actions during the flight had been based on a misinterpretation. The weight of her mistake, combined with relief that the boy was safe, left her feeling both embarrassed and comforted. This experience highlighted the delicate balance between vigilance and overreaction, teaching Betty valuable lessons in empathy and discernment. In the calm aftermath, she reflected deeply on her role and the impact of her actions. The boy, now comforted by his aunt, was reassured, and the tension of the situation dissipated. The aunt expressed gratitude for Betty's concern, easing any lingering tension. Betty resumed her duties with renewed purpose and a refined perspective, having learned the importance of balancing care with judgment. She approached her role with a deeper understanding of human complexity, preparing for future flights with a more thoughtful and empathetic outlook. As the plane readied for its next journey, Betty felt a renewed dedication to her responsibilities, ready to serve with both compassion and discernment.